worlds using signs. I'm Simon. And I'm Jeff. So, Jeff, today we're going to do a, a kind of a follow-up. We've done Marvel superheroes. and so Right, yeah, that should cover all of it, right? <laughs> well, all the good ones, at least. Because, boy, does DC not have good superheroes. That's not true. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you may have alienated some number of the listener base. And although both of us just agreed that John Constantine is a fun superhero, although, again, he doesn't the, really the do wizard, much. wizard, caster, yeah. Yeah. magic guy who gets his friends murdered. Exactly. I feel like their mainstays aren't that great. And yeah, that, you and your, your, your Supermans, your Batmans. Your Aquamans. People who punch people, really. Your Wonder Woman. Yeah, like, that's all of their superheroes are people who punch really hard. Every single superhero has an amount of superhuman strength, which is crazy. And then there's a lot about different kinds of Earth. They've tried to write in a lot of... I guess Marvel's done it too, but I feel like they need to stop it with, like, alternate universe comics, which is what they really enjoy doing. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the whole premise of... Do you see, though? That there's several different... Is it? I don't yeah. know. I mean, the whole premise of, of DC is detective comics. Is that a thing? That's, is that what that stands that's for? That's what DC stands for, is, yeah. In, like, huh. the the 20s and 30s, it was a detective comic company. Well, today I learned. <laughs> Good job. Even in your old ancient, ancient age, you can learn new things. <laughs> right? It's bound to happen. <laughs> anyway, so... We're doing DC Comics superheroes. We're not doing villains because I realize... Because the villains are more interesting. Yeah, and they're just, they're weird. Batman alone has some pretty weird superheroes. Yeah, Batman's rogues gallery is all of DC. And especially for a guy who, like, is just super smart and rich, he has a lot of villains that actually have superpowers which I feel like is like a weird creative choice. <laughs> Be like, don't worry, everyone who's given superpowers in this world becomes evil. Everyone who's rich is good. Or at least this one person. Yeah, are there any other rich people in universe? I mean, assume I guess there's so. Lex Luthor. No, Lex, yeah, I guess there's Lex Luthor, but he's not really a Batman character. That's true. He's very much not. Do you think? What's his name? Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor were, like, friends at one point. Like, they have had a couple of uh, business ventures together. Yeah, or they, like, went to a English boarding school together and were, like, way too close for male friends. Well, no, that's just the Batman and Superman. Ah. Well, I, well Superman didn't c- couldn't go to an English boarding school. He grew up in, like, Nebraska. Well, I mean, I'm saying, like, the bromance. Oh, yeah, no, of course. That, that I, makes I think sense. Bruce Wayne is only allowed the one. But I, people can't ship that many people. Can't what that many people ship? Oh, oh, okay. I thought, yeah, I thought you said something else. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they could. I mean, like, I feel like Bruce Wayne and Superman are a bromance because Bruce Wayne is trying to fill in the the vacuum that was set in his <laughs> that life was left with. When Lex Luthor uh, became evil, went yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's why he's uh, into Batman th- or into Superman. Then just that uh, shared uh, relationship between all of them. Yeah, it's like when you become really good friends with the person who really hates your act because. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just got that in common. You got that shared hatred and and hurt feeling. Anyway, so <laughs> we <laughs> we've gone too deep. We have to go somewhere else now. <laughs> so Superman's gonna be our first superhero. He's the the Man of Steel, as his friends call him. He has invulnerability, super strength, mm-hmm. freezy right. breath, heat vision. Sure, he's super fast. He can fly, and I think. He also has x-ray vision, but I don't remember. I want to say he does. I know he does in, in one of the movies, but mm. I don't know if that's like a in-canon power or if they felt like giving him that power. I don't know why they would. Oh, if that was too overpowered, the x-ray vision is what put it over the top. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that they're like, well, we could give him x-ray vision, but I mean, like, I feel like, I feel like that's too much. That That's... 
that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Right. We have to hide something from. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> his one weakness: curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Opaque surfaces. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like... Oh no, it's Polarized kind of a... Glass Man. What'd you say? <laughs> uh, just gonna say, Superman, kind of boring because he can do everything? I agree. I think in canon, he's an he is an alien from Krypton, and the reason right. he can do so much is because Krypton is far harsher of a planet than Earth is. And so he's adapted to Krypton. I don't right. <laughs> know about that... you. <laughs> But what planet with people <laughs> existing on it uh, will lead them to have freezy breath and maybe x-ray vision and invulnerability? Yeah. Yeah. And the ability to fly. <laughs> they don't do a cop-out like the Hulk does. or the, They're like, he can't fly, he just jumps really far. Mm-hmm. They're, they say he can fly. He just legit flies. He just actually flies. Yeah. So, I think first we have to nail down how he does what he does. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could, like, you could write off super strength as the the proteins that make up his musculature are stronger than the proteins that make up human musculature. So he can, like, pull harder on them. Sure. Yeah. Like, super strength is kind of subjective anyway he's just a species that is stronger than humans yeah and and you have the the gambit of organic substances to work from because who's to say he can't make those sub right yeah so and super speed's kind of the same way you know maybe it's just like a weird genetic thing however freezing breath yeah that one gets a little more difficult <laughs> maybe he can like compress he's like a bladder inside of him and he can mm-hmm. compress the gas inside the bladder and then expel it through a very small hole like his mouth and it's cold <laughs> so it's like he's like a, a canister of compressed air like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then he just has like heat sinks around that bladder to like dispel the heat that he generate from the compression that's how the, right yeah that's that's how the, um so he's like an air conditioning unit yeah well more or less i was thinking of tying in all of the other nonsense that he can do in that it's some chemical reaction that allows him to like run super fast or something but it's which would be endothermic exothermic for what for freezy breath puts off cold uh endothermic absorbs energy yeah puts off cold yes the (laughs) opposite of how that actually works Yeah, no, uh, so so you're saying that he has, like, bladder of urea in his mouth, and and he can just, like, spray a mixture of urea and water from, like, two different holes out of his mouth. When they mix in the air, it makes it really cold. Sure, why not? I, you know, I can't, I mean, human beings can create urea. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> it does mean that he's spitting urine you which see, I, like. I like that as canon more that maybe that superman's one weakness is that he's really embarrassed about the fact that his freeze breath is actually just pee <laughs> like it's not freeze breath so much as it is just how they excrete yeah like he doesn't have oh that's really gross <laughs> I mean, it makes Lois Lane kissing Superman kind of weird. Yeah, it does. I'm okay with it. I mean, I didn't write it. This is what they gave us. Uh, it's true. I mean, not only is this what this is, this is true. This is in canon fiction. He pees from his mouth. Pretty sure. I heard it on the <laughs> internet once. Yeah, yeah. And you can believe anything you hear on the internet. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm still, like, just thinking about this. <laughs> you just real hung up on it, huh? Yeah. Well, what about heat vision? Heat vision. So he looks at a thing and lasers of heat rather than light. I think it wouldn't be a laser. <laughs> uh, no. Like, Do you know what microwaves the L- <laughs> are emitted from his eyes. 
Uh, you could do that, but then he wouldn't be able to heat up metal. Mm, true, true. So maybe it's like, maybe he fires plasma from his eyes? <laughs> That's terrifying. I mean, but so is the ability to fire just heat from your brain i think so yeah that's true so here's the thing mm-hmm. you can focus a beam of plasma okay and fire it and like ionize stuff in a direction it's very hot mm-hmm. the thing is though to do that you have to have like cooling like because your head is gonna melt yeah no there's uh you definitely need to like sink the rest of that uh the heat that's going where you don't want it to yeah so how does Superman not melt his own face? Oh, man. Yeah, that's it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, anything making that much heat is going to also have that much heat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe his eyeballs are vacuums, so there's nowhere for the heat to go. Except, like, radiative heat. So it's bright. But it's not, like, hot. You know what I'm saying? How does that give him heat vision if it's bright but not hot? I mean, and so, so you know, like, I, I'm thinking, like, if you had, if you were in space, if you were in a vacuum, and right. and you were accelerating plasma, like the sun, mm-hmm. none of the actual heat from the sun actually reaches Earth because there's a vacuum between right. Earth and the sun. And so there's no medium for the heat to pass through. So, Mm -hmm. what if, like, his eyeballs that are doing the focusing of the plasma and the acceleration are vacuums? Like, what if his entire head is a vac... And so, he just, like, accelerates the plasma in his brain, Mm -hmm. and then he fires it out of his eyes, and then... I mean, that would just make him more hot, because he can't bleed off any of the heat, though. Oh, yeah. Because I guess... You kind of need to... I know! No, that's what I'm saying. So, like, it ends... So, so you know the nuclear reactor in France that's trying to do fusion? Sure. I'm saying that's inside of his skull. So he accelerates the plasma really fast in, like, a loop inside of his skull using magnets. Okay. Organic magnets. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. And... And then, that that's a vacuum. And then, like, when he wants to fire his laser beams, it just briefly opens up the ports that are his eyes, and they fire plasma out. And the plasma's always... It's, it's a contained system. It's always surrounded by vacuum. Okay. Oh, okay. You see what I'm I saying? So it never mm-hmm. actually touches or bleeds into his head because it's always a vacuum. Sure. And it just uses magnets to to move the plasma. I mean, I don't know when he became a robot, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> <laughs> so so let me get this: the the issue you have with my idea is that you is that something <laughs> organic can't do that, or there is no reason that I can imagine that would lead to that being evolved that evolution wouldn't create a creature that can create plasma inside of its face <laughs> i mean they probably would have sorted out like exactly there isn't that, a response to that so they wouldn't need <laughs> to to rely on their plasma face exactly so that they wouldn't melt their fla- face. Like, the first few iterations of Kryptonians probably never used their plasma because it would melt their face. And then, you know, millennia down the line... Well, that's the opposite of evolution, though. Like, they had to always be blasting off these plasma beams, <laughs> and the ones that didn't have an isolated system melted their faces and couldn't reproduce. So that's what I meant to say. Uh, the isolated systems came first, and then, like, Kryptonians were just like, oh, we just have these vacuums inside of our faces. And then they slowly developed the ability to generate plasma. Like to focus it and to generate it. Yeah. yeah. And then all the Kryptonians that didn't have that super cool containment system in their in their faces... I had their faces melted. Exactly. All right. 
I'll allow that. <laughs> and then, like... You sold me on the face melting. Maybe maybe they have to just... We don't know what the, what the distribution of elements are on Krypton. And maybe mm-hmm. they just have a lot of natural magnets that... that <laughs> just grow inside you. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to eat. So it's like neodymium... Mm-hmm. Stronger than neodymium magnets. <laughs> you have to, like eat it as part of like a nutritious breakfast or else you're gonna melt your face off because the plasma that's in there (laughs) is a real aggressive advertising (laughs) uh that their cereal companies went with (laughs) we fortify all of our cornflakes with ferromagnetic (laughs) elements so you don't melt your face maybe that freezy breath like generates superconducting magnets by cooling them down okay so he has to like use them like, a balanced amount so he doesn't melt or freeze his face. Yeah. Yeah, so that's like his okay. homeostasis. Right, right. Yeah. It's starting to flesh it out now <laughs> more. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, you realize Batman's brain is not in his head because that's where his plasma is kept. So his brain has to be somewhere else in his body. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably fine. It's probably it's fine. It's perfectly normal for all the, like, sensory input to be located far away from the processing center of it when you've evolved on a on a, such a harsh world that you need to be able to fire plasma like that is <laughs> that is selective for you probably also like don't want your brain to be in an obvious place I'm sure that's also helpful yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. I can give you that one too. <laughs> this is this is Jeff after he's had a nap and he's sick of my. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at least you're uh, you've come to terms with that. <laughs> I do like that the part of the like description for Superman is that although he is an alien to this world, mm-hmm. he heavily values his humanity. And fights with conviction for truth, justice, and the American way. Why would an an (laughs) alien at all care about the American way? Like, there's because he's real big. That was just something I feel like is stupid. Pulling yourselves up by your bootstraps. Yeah, and you know, systemic racism. The two American. Which is really surprising how readily accepted he is as an yeah being the most illegal alien yeah well, it's because his skin's white oh yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right yeah, see <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> that kryptonian privilege <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> kryptonian privilege <laughs> yeah he like he like lifts cars off of people and they're like okay check your privilege not all of us can save <laughs> anyway next one up aquaman also someone who's like readily accepted as a foreigner is he is, like what is he oh is he just a person who is of the ocean is the extent of my knowledge with aquaman of the ocean no he is a man okay it's in okay. the name who not wrong uh who is a Atlantean? So he's okay. from Atlantis. You know, that very real city. Right. Um, and so he has, like, it being an underwater city, he's like a, he's a fish person. Well, I mean, it's like underwater now, isn't it? It wasn't supposed to always be underwater. Yeah, but everyone who lives there has developed the ability to live underwater. All right. Because you... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> because you know how when catastrophic things happen to cities, Beijing's air pollution, and... The entire population pretty much immediately adapt to that issue. Like how people in China have really powerful filters in them. They clean out the mm-hmm. air that they breathe in so they don't get lung cancer or asthma. Right. Yeah, it's like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thanks for clearing it up. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. He's got a weird... This is a weird one. Anyway, he's Atlantean. Yeah, what's he do? He, like, swims good, talks to fishes and also see like aquatic mammals so he is super strong he can live right of course over two tons well over two is tons. this when he's in water or out of water both he can jump six miles <laughs> <laughs> uh is this when he's in water or out of water? out of water 
Because it's just swimming <laughs> if it's in water. It's just... <laughs> he can swim around 6,700 miles per hour, which is well beyond... That kills the man. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's well beyond the mock speed for water, which means he is pretty much vaporized. Right. And he has enhanced hearing from sonar. On top of all that, he can control and communicate with with animals of the sea by subtly altering their cerebellum. Yes. <sighs> like... Do they specify that? So the, it says that he doesn't control them. He adds compulsion. Okay. But yes, at least that is the Wikipedia article. That I I will give you has a warning that says, this article may contain an excessive <laughs> amount of intricate detail that may interest <laughs> only a particular audience. Well, it was at me. least they uh, <laughs> left that disclaimer there. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, so I've realized I, I wore the loudest pants for this recording. You just gotta really put those uh like windbreaker tearaway <laughs> pants up in the up in the closet and never pull them back out. I, I, I pretty much that's what I'm wearing right now. To be they're zip offs, not tearaway. Anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> well thank God for that. <laughs> so he has to be made of something stronger than human flesh. Stronger than humans, yes. Because yes. he has to be able to just survive the force of going through the water that fast. And he has to be able to, like, resist bullets and stuff. Man, I really want to watch the Aquaman movie right now. I, I feel like if you can survive going through any fluid medium that fast, bullets are probably not that big of a concern. I, I agree. Um, so he's just gotta be made of, like, something... Do we think it's something that's really rigid? Or... I mean, there's a whole bunch of issues with that, like, friction (laughs) alone. (laughs) Why doesn't the water vaporize around him? Maybe that's how he does it. Is that he generates so much heat that... Oh, like, uh, the blade of an ice skate? Kind of. It's a uh, a ski. That's how a ski works, not an ice skate. Is the f- the friction on the on the ice melts it, mm-hmm. and then they can slide over it. Yeah, that's how that works. Ski uh, ice skates work because water is or ice is slippery, and so is metal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So maybe that's what maybe that's what he's doing. He's just generating enough friction. That it vaporizes the water, and so he's actually going through... And it, like, propels him along. Yeah, very hot. Or it, like, vaporizes the water ahead of him, and then just he's, like, pulled through the vacuum as it, like, becomes water again behind him. I like it. I like it because I'm in my brain I'm thinking, maybe he has... You know that, that reactor in France that can generate that nuclear they're fusion. trying to do <laughs> <laughs> maybe he has one of those in his head and <laughs> and the way it cools is that it vaporizes the water in front of him at his head mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so he <laughs> okay i really like this idea because not the not the fusion. That's a stupid idea. But I like the idea that he's getting <laughs> that he's getting sucked along by his head because it means the entire force of his body is just on his neck. Like like yeah, <laughs> it's probably very uncomfortable. Yeah, he just decompresses his spine every single time he swims. <laughs> he's just slowly on the the little like the. Stretchy racks from the uh, Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> yeah, so he generates heat. Let's say, I don't know, maybe he's like, maybe, so maybe his brain is like a supercomputer and it generates so much mm-hmm. heat. And so he has to, when he. So he just thinks real hard, like he just does some <laughs> like, really, like yeah. quantum computing yeah. while he's swimming. Yes, that is. A precisely what I am saying, but that's how he can communicate with 
the marine animals is that like like that's part mm-hmm. of it is that like he needs a really good brain to communicate with animal and then he also can use it to swim real fast <laughs> i really like the fact that he's getting yeah because he has to like brute force through <laughs> to uh figure out how to correctly like convey whatever compulsion to the animals so yeah exactly super computer brain exactly and maybe he does it with like minor electrical signals that get conducted through water mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's that's called thinking right there <laughs> i don't know he can leap real fast. Like, so the leaping six miles... Oh, yeah, there's the jumping six miles thing. But that makes sense. I mean, like, if you're a creature that's developed to survive on the bottom of the ocean and not, mm-hmm. like, just be flattened by the pressure... Yeah, you would yeah. be... It's like training with weights yeah. on. Mm-hmm. You know, you jump a few times when you have, like, 20-pound weights on your foot and then like you take them off and suddenly you jump a whole mile yeah you jump a mile (laughs) (laughs) yeah everyone has that exact reference in their brains just right waiting waiting to come up Mm -hmm. and we won't get to his trident it's magical that's how that's explained next sure (laughs) next one is wonder woman okay what's she got she's an amazonian uh huh. From the Amazon. From the Amazon. Um, and she has what's described as godlike abilities of incalculable superhuman strength, nigh invulnerability, okay. speed, flight, healing factor, semi immortality. But yes, I also have semi immortality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i agree i think it's either you have it or you don't there's no like well he kind of lives forever yeah definitely that she was immortal up until when she uh, <laughs> kicked the bucket <laughs> yeah so okay, I, yeah let's toss that one out because yeah. that one doesn't make sense that one's not real <laughs> that, that was just words uh <laughs> So I don't know if she's an Amazonian from the Amazon the forest or an Amazonian from Amazon the Greek island. I think it's from the Greek island. So then what is it about ancient Greeks that made them such such good athletes? Uh, well, they had the Olympics first. Oh. They were practicing longer than anyone else. So that's what you're saying, that that the all ancient Greeks had the powers of Wonder Woman. Because they had selected their young and their breeding population mm-hmm. through the Olympic. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what happens with uh, frequent marathons and Greco-Roman wrestling. You know, I think that makes total sense. This feels a little bit like Ben Carson saying that pyramids are for grain storage. <laughs> <laughs> That is not what we're saying. Instead, we're saying that the original Olympics is actually an extensive breeding program to create mm-hmm. nigh invulnerability and incalculable and semi-immortal <laughs> beings. I, I like the fact that they use the word incalculable. I was genuinely <laughs> expecting you to say, like, the Wikipedia article says she has incalculable strength and can lift two tons. <laughs> And there's no one to be able to lift two tons. No, she can lift, I believe, as much as Superman can. Okay. But, like, uh, what does incalculable superhuman strength mean? You don't don't calculate superhuman strength. You measure it. It would be a measurable superhuman strength. And first of all... instruments sensitive enough to measure it so it's uh they're trying to derive it oh oh i see but our computers also aren't uh advanced enough to derive it properly they just the numbers just go too high that right. that 64 bit system just cannot handle it <laughs> <laughs> What if, they, gotta, they gotta ask Google with their quantum supremacy to help out. What if maybe that's like outdated knowledge? Like they were they were trying to do the calculations for her super strength on like the original Turing machine, and they're like, right. we just it's just impossible. We can't do it. Sorry, guys. We just we only got four vacuum tubes. <laughs> can't go much higher than that. Sorry, I, I we're trying. We are trying to calculate Wait. it. We got this whole warehouse 
four megabytes we're working with here. <laughs> four whole megabytes. You, you shouldn't need more than that to calculate someone's strength. <laughs> yeah. yeah and then they just gave up yeah i'm okay with that yeah i like that too and they're just like it's just it's just beyond it's just a lot that's all it is it's just a lot <laughs> uh how can she fly though is that another part of the breeding program are you saying that if if we subscribe is to it eugenics? actual flying or is it jumping good and it looks like flying actually this is something we didn't explain for superman either it's it's and I don't use this word lightly. Legit flying. Okay. Yeah, you know, like so. So like they can hover, levitate, and also like move. Like they they don't have to generate lift. Is what I'm asking. They had the well, they somehow do. Whether that means that they are changing buoyancy, or they're moving very quickly with a foil so that they have a high pressure system and a low pressure system or mm-hmm. they're creating some sort of vacuum maybe <laughs> so are you laughing because it's farts again uh, <laughs> jeff you ruined it <laughs> <laughs> well well this has this is farts Plus, this is farts 2.0. This is this is farts with an additional. Okay, caveat. we've we've refined the farts. Go on. So maybe, and I'm and I'm coming up with this, and I'm looking at a at a picture of Wonder Woman. Maybe they, her and Superman, both fly by sucking in air like really fast into their mouths, and then. Uh huh farting it out equally fast so they're like helicopters you know how helicopters work so it's they're like yeah that's exactly <laughs> how they work so they're like just ramming air through their person yep they're just ramming right. air through their person so when she's flying she's going and then <laughs> the whole time yeah all right Cool. I'm, I mean, who's to stop us? There's no... <laughs> sure isn't you, listener. <laughs> yeah, listener. This has already been made and released. It's already out there. <laughs> Do we want to talk about her golden lasso of truth? Which may have only been from the, uh, what's her name, Carter, uh, television what? show. Jenny? That's not Jenny Carter. What's her name? The, the woman... I have no idea. The woman who played Wonder Woman. There was a TV show? There was Linda Carter. It was Linda Carter. Okay. So she has a a, a golden lasso that mm-hmm. <clears throat> can make people tell the truth. Ha- I feel like it's less the lasso is making people tell the truth, and, and they're now like <clears throat> bound by someone with incalculable <laughs> strength, and they're just intimidated <laughs> to and like feel compelled to tell the truth you know what i like that i like it it's like advanced interrogation and she's created the mythos around the lasso so that villains can be like i couldn't help myself man she had me in her lasso of truth (laughs) and so they're like (laughs) just all of them know that it's not real but they also like don't want to say it it's fake so that they can keep using it as a excuse yeah and and really, they're just terrified that this literal monster is about to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's a good. It's a good. Uh, I was gonna do Power Girl until I read into this, and okay, Power Girl is is Power Girl just Superman again? Yeah, it's just it's just female Superman. I like it. She exhibits all the classic Kryptonian power. Mm-hmm. You know, like super strength, flight. Super speed, invulnerability. X ray is apparently a classic Kryptonian power. Telescopic okay. and microscopic heat and heat vision. That's a horrible sentence. Um, yeah. <laughs> freeze breath and super hearing. How does super hearing work? Or can they just pick out individual things better? Like they're just processing the the sensory input better, or do they have like a wider range that they can hear. Hmm. I think it's both. I think that okay. they can hear softer noises, but they can also hear more noise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have filters, like pass filters on their ears that allow them to like mm. 
rapidly scan between frequency that they're picking mm-hmm. up on and that allows them to like block out everything which allows them to really focus in on that amount of i mean i so they uh, just have like radios also in their head yeah pretty much i mean <laughs> when you're generating <laughs> the problem is they don't have actual actual radios because the radios would would get interference from the plasma that's they're generating in their brain. Yeah, like a massive amount of interference. Yeah, yeah. So they can't. That's not how that works. It's it's like they have normal ears. They have like little hairs that wiggle. Th- yep, that's uh, that's an explanation on how ears work. I mean, do you have a better explanation on how ears? Uh, no, I like that one actually. <laughs> so they have little hairs that wiggle, and then they, and then they just have a pass filter so they can screen out certain frequencies just. As, as soon as it becomes digital information. So they're like, well, I don't want, like, you know, I want, like... Crying baby, out. Yeah. Airplane fuselage, out. Yeah. What those two people up front are gossiping about, got it. Yeah. And maybe they have... Their heads are pretty much empty. They're vacuums, right? So maybe their faces right. are owl faces with, act- like, focusing beams. So they can focus <laughs> on whatever they're looking at. Mm-hmm. And in here that way. Okay. Right, I, sure. I'm saying their I like their it. faces are residence chambers. Yes, yes, that is what you're saying. Yes, I want you to make sure. How would someone have microscopic? I mean, like you have to define what microscopic vision is. Like, uh, can they see I... tardigrades real good, or <laughs> can they just look at it like, yep, there's probably some microscopic <laughs> stuff there because I have that too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. I guess technically. We all have microscopic vision. It's just that our resolution isn't very good. I think it implies right. that they have good enough resolution that they can see on the micrometer scale, which means that human beings must look whack to them because we have so many oh, holes yeah. on our face. Mm-hmm. Like it's probably gross, it, real gross. Like why would you? you? <laughs> Maybe that's what they think human beings look like. They're like, I don't know why human beings find each other attractive. They're horrifying. Mm-hmm. They are absolutely horrifying. <laughs> they are pretty much bags of flesh, of gooey, gooey flesh, filled with holes and dirt. And it's gross. Yeah, yeah, no, you did just describe humans. Yeah, like, they could see, like, the cloud of bacteria that all humans have around them. Yeah, this is... Mm-hmm. I... That's not a good vision to have. No, kudos... It's more of a curse than a superpower. (laughs) Kudos to Superman and Lois Lane for him just, like, looking past her (laughs) obvious deficiencies to be like, you know what? No, you as a person are good enough for me to just move through this... Really dive into all that bacteria near you. Yeah, move through this cloud of bacteria so that I can just be near you at all. (laughs) Yep. So glad that's uh, just an image <laughs> now, <laughs> just of every person. <laughs> yep, of everyone. And the more skin they have, like the worse they look. So like, <laughs> hair doesn't look that bad at the microscopic level, but like your head would just be like nothing but whole. <laughs> Maybe they really like mm-hmm. dogs because, like, then you don't. Oh no, they probably really don't like dogs. That's probably really gross for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That seems like a again like a curse. It's not a good superpower, <laughs> right? What else do we got? The next one is the Flash, who is a normal guy that runs real good. So he is superhuman. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> he can move, think, react at light speeds. He is superhuman endurance. He can run incredible distances. He can vibrate what, like, so fast. All of those are derived from the one thing. Yep. Like, he has superhuman endurance, but he also can move <laughs> at light speed, so it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. He can vibrate fast enough to cause quantum tunneling. He can travel through okay. time. He can lend and borrow speed. He can heal more rapidly than other humans. And... He is unaffected by air friction. Well, yeah, if he's running at light speed. I mean, because the first thing you start off with is, oh, you're moving at light speed? Oh, you're going to have, like, really crazy pressures to deal with. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I I had to think of the word. (laughs) Maybe he's... Yeah, I don't know where to start with 
with him. I mean, can move, think, and react at light speed. Well, react is moving and thinking, so... <laughs> so we can just we'll say react? Set that to the side. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not at light speeds. Maybe he can move and think in the future. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, like, yes, but... So he's not reacting to what's happening. He's reacting to what's going to happen. Yeah. But how does he then see that? Well, he can time travel. So if we explain that one. Okay. Yeah, that's a good starting point. So how does he time travel? You know, that's a good question. Uh... <laughs> I think, isn't it like... He goes really In fast. canon, he like is the speed force or becomes the speed force, which is apparently a thing. Yes. So in, in canon, he moves fast enough that he becomes the speed force that goes back in time to give him his original power. Okay. So all you have to do is mess with... Just like every step of this makes less sense. Yeah, this one's tough. I have an idea, though. Okay. What if we flip causality on our head, on its head, on our head? Okay. <laughs> Just up and causality on top of ourselves. What if the entire universe respond to what the Flash is doing? So it's not that he is okay. reacting to something in the world. Something in the world happens because he reacted to it. So he is... So just he is the the butterfly of the butterfly effect. Yeah, that's exactly right. what it is. Actually, no. He is not... He is the typhoon or hurricane or whatever the natural disaster in that mm -hmm. case. And he is causing the butterfly to flap its wings. Because mm -hmm. of course the butterfly has to flap its wings to cause the hurricane. What I'm saying is that right. time isn't linear. It's, it's wibbly wobbly timing. I was trying to think of a better way of saying so. that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some weird things happen a, a, a kind of a way that you could think about it is that the flash is living his life backwards so okay, that he's also benjamin button not quite so benjamin button aged <laughs> backwards right i mean that he yeah he lived his life forward yeah yes <laughs> and he taught us that a man, that any man can experience life and the horrors of war, no matter their disability. Mm -hmm. By the way, being unborn must be horrifying. <laughs> right? And, like, do you maintain, like, your own cognition as a baby? So do you, like, ex just, just lose motor function? <laughs> And are just real mad about it yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. You can, like, no longer... Like, your teeth just get sucked back up into your head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the... I don't think people thought that through particularly well. Anyway. No. No, not at all. We'll save it for another episode. Yes. Um. So... So maybe that's what's, like, we live our lives in one direction. He lives his mm -hmm. life in an opposite direction. So... Right. He is causing... His effects are causing the causes. I don't know if you said that well, but I do think I know what you're getting yeah, at. Yeah, I think I said it. I mean, I think it was poetic and beautiful. It was kind of like... <laughs> poetic and beautiful, much like a bludgeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, much like a cudgel. <laughs> cool, so I think that works. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, an interesting take on it, and I kind of like and, that. And maybe that's how, like, the quantum tunneling and stuff works, is because he kind of, he can mess with the causality of, of the world, so it's not that he's really mm -hmm. vibrating through walls, it's just, no, I, I am on the other side of the wall. And just the universe makes it happen. Yeah. It, it, you know what it feels like? It feels like Futurama, the, the, the spaceship, <laughs> like the ship. yeah, the ship doesn't yeah. move, the universe moves around the ship, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, I was going to do one more thing, which is the invisible aura that protects him from air friction. Okay. I mean, how does uh, him, the Flash, living life backwards, kind of, technically, affect that? Like, I, it, Maybe he doesn't need the friction. He doesn't right. need it. Yeah, it's like, less he is going to a place and he is in a place and that's just like... Yeah, so he's... The universe is catching up, so 
He's not even moving. Like the friction doesn't apply. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like there's like a glitch in the system and he's just like appearing at a different moment. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. This has been Pedantic and Wavium. You can visit us at pedanticandwavium.com. Or pedantic. Or pedantichw.com if you don't want to type things. Yep. We're on Twitter at phandwavium. You can follow us there. It's also where we put out our new episode. Thanks to Joe Sopchek for our theme music. We're on YouTube. Like us. Yeah, we're on any podcasting app except for podbean for some reason yeah that's fine i forgot to look into that i'll look into it at some point maybe subscribe comment like us tell your friends yeah stop people in the streets surreptitiously download our episodes on your friends phones yeah uh get thumb drives and just like download a whole bunch of episodes on them and then reverse pickpocket them into people's (laughs) coats just leave them on tables in places and hope that people plug them into their computers. It's actually a legitimate way of hacking. Oh yeah, it is, yeah. because people are bad at security yeah. and plug things they found into their computers. Although I will say, if you see a thumb drive that is labeled pedantic hand wave him, you should definitely pick it up, you should definitely plug it in, and you should download <laughs> everything that's on it. Download? You don't download things from a thumb drive. Move? Oh, yeah, you're downloading. You're copying it over. Yeah, something like that. And then you should give it to your friends. Uh, and all of them should do the same thing. Anyway, thanks for listening. You don't need to, you need to hear our business strategy. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a great business strategy. It is. It's worked really well so far. Goodbye. I've been Jeff. Uh, goodbye. I've been Simon.